Okay, so today's subject matter is Stargate for the Sega Game Gear, based on the 1994 movie of the same name. Stargate also got video games for the Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis Mega Drive thing, and the Game Boy. Now the Super NES and Genesis versions were your typical side-scrolling action game, where you took control of Colonel Jack O'Neill, with one L, and you basically ran around the desert planet and shot bugs and stuff. Sometimes you get a Horus Guard or one of those flying bird people, Game's not half bad, we'll look at it somewhere down the line. However, for anyone looking for Stargate action on the go, that's not the game you would be getting. Oh no. You see, unlike the console versions of Stargate, which were side-scrolling action games, Stargate on the handhelds was a puzzle game. A somewhat strange departure from the console versions, but in any case, the whole goal of Stargate, the puzzle, is a bit baffling at first, but it's actually quite simple once you know what you're doing. Here's the deal. You have a well. You have a space well, if you will. A star well, if you will. And you have these falling stones with symbols. You match up three stones of the same symbol and they go away. Fairly simple, straightforward stuff. It's a concept we've seen before in 2D. Now here's the kicker. You see that code thing on top of the screen, the one with seven symbols? I honestly don't know the proper context because I don't have the manual and I, there's not enough information online, but apparently this code is key to securing Stargates in the main story mode of the game. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm guessing it's supposed to be a Stargate address or something, but that's usually comprising a set of symbols modeled after star constellations, not hier hieroglyphs or anything of the sort. I'm thinking too much about this, am I? Anyways, if you stack three columns of the same symbol that's listed on the code above, that symbol will light up on top, indicating that it is now locked in or something. Anyways, once you lock in all seven symbols in the code above, the current round ends and you move on to the next level, where you're given a new set of symbols to lock in and start the whole process all over again. It's really fun and exciting stuff. Promise? I guess? I suppose? Control's simple enough, left and right moves the piece around the tube, one button pushes the piece down and button 2 flips the piece, usually revealing a different symbol. Not much to it really, it's fairly simple to work with and that's a good thing by the way. No real reason to overthink these things sometimes. There are three modes of play in Stargate. Skills mode, 1P battle, and 2P battle. Skills mode is your typical continuous marathon mode that you keep playing until you top out. Battle mode is the main story mode of sorts, where you, as Dr. Daniel Jackson, have to compete against Ra's Horus Guard to gain control of all the Stargates in the sector. It's basically a versus mode where you have to clear the puzzle before your opponent does. Because of the small Game Gear screen, your only means of deciphering your opponent's progress is the meter on the other side of the screen. When the meter empties, you win the round and subsequently the Stargate in contention. From there, you pick out another Stargate and you do the thing over and over again, and it takes a good long while to do so, and it starts to lose its luster after a while. Visually speaking, there's not much to say about Stargate. The main playfield, the space well that is, looks fairly decent for the most part, and you could easily make out the various bits and pieces further down the well, so there's that. It's nice and colorful and all that. The intermission scenes with O'Neill and the Horus Guards and whatnots, look ar they look alright by Game Gear standards. Nothing really exceptional or anything, but it's not eye rape either, so there you go. Stargate the Handheld shares its musical compositions with its bigger console counterparts. The exact same musical tracks heard on the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis iterations are recycled and reused on this Game Gear game. This means completely original music and no musical cues from the original film score by David Arnold. Fair enough, I suppose, but outside of the game's main theme used in the opening introduction, none of these other tracks really fit the overall tonality of the game. Not that they're badly composed, because they're not, they sound alright on the Game Gear, even in a lesser form. It's just that their track's more suited for an action game rather than a puzzler, and they just sound out of place here, at least in my mind. These tracks are more likely to get me pumped for action, not tense to get that right piece to finish the puzzle. As for the sound effects, there's not much there, only a handful can be heard, and that's being generous, it's really minimal on the sound effects here. I like puzzle games, they're a nice quick diversion and all, but for whatever reason, I honestly couldn't get into Stargate. Maybe because the game itself isn't all that interesting, but may or maybe it's because it bears the Stargate name and you expect a nice little run-and-gun action game like the console versions, rather than this 3D tile-dropping well game. I don't know. All I know is as far as puzzle games go, this one didn't hold my interest for too long. 
It's not a terrible game per se. If nothing else, it's a competently executed game. Plays rather well for the most part. Presentation's rather decent for the most part. It just doesn't have the holding power of a puzzle leak or a Dr. Mario or even that brick game thing. It's just a rather meh game at best. Good for an hour or so and then tossed to the pile so you could go back to playing a much better game. Overall, Stargate for the Sega Game Gear is three fries short of a Happy Meal. Make of that what you will.